Welcome to Pleasant Green Sunday School. This is Lesson 7 for October the 16th, 2016. We're still uh, in Unit 2 entitled The Sovereignty of Jesus. Our topic for today taken from the Adult Quarterly is Gifted and Chosen Leaders. The devotional reading is taken from Ephesians chapter 4 verses 7 through 13. Our background scripture is Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14 and Hebrews chapter 5 verse 10. We will be studying today Hebrews chapter 4 uh, verses 14 through 16 and Hebrews chapter 5 verses 1 through 10. Our key verse reads, Since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. That is taken from Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14 uh, from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to consider that God appointed Jesus as high priest for the people. Number two, appreciate that Jesus in his humanity fully understands and identifies with the daily lives of all peoples. And number three, identify the kinds of leaders who suffer, serve, and obey God's intentions in the spirit of Jesus. We have three outlines today that we will be studying. The first one is entitled Leadership's Spiritual Ministry. The second outline is entitled Leadership's Spiritual Requirements. And the third outline is entitled Leadership's Ultimate example. We certainly thank and praise God that uh, we are able to share this Sunday School lesson with you. God has certainly blessed us to stay together and continue to uh, study His Word together. And we hope that you have been uh, following along with us as we have undertaken to study uh, the book of Hebrews, particularly as it relates to these Jewish Christians uh, and some of the things that uh, they were going through. I want to read a little bit of the biblical context from um, our quarterly and then I want to read a little bit of the background from our lesson standard. The book or epistle of Hebrews was written to a group of Jewish Christians who were caught in the midst of a struggle between adhering to the principles of their newfound faith in Christ are reverting to the familiar rituals of Judaism. The temple was still standing and all of the priestly functions and rituals were still being performed. The severe persecution they were enduring as converts to Christianity could be avoided if they returned to the old Mosaic system. They were spiritually at a Red Sea afraid or unsure of going forward and tempted to go backward into Egypt. Coming to the realization of all they had in Christ would eliminate the desire of taking the easy way out by returning to the familiar and impotent uh, Mosaic religious system. Beginning in chapters uh, Hebrews chapters 1 through 5 the writer taught that Christ is better than personages they held in high esteem in their spiritual heritage, namely angels, Moses, and Aaron. And then from our lesson standard, the law of Moses decreed that a high priest preside over worship both in the tabernacle and in the temple they superseded. That superseded it. Aaron was the first high priest of all members of Israel's priesthood and they were required to, uh, to be uh, descended from him. I want you to look at Exodus chapter 28 verse 1, um, Exodus chapter 29 verse 9, and Exodus chapter uh, 40 verses 12 through 15. I think we can all relate uh, to some of the things that uh, these Christians were going through at that time. Uh, they were being persecuted for their faith and they considered 
going backward. Uh, we know from reading the book of Hebrews they were not making progress which is a danger in and of itself and we're going to share some scriptures a little bit later on um, to help us understand that when we give our lives to Christ it is just the beginning of all the good that uh, are the better promises as uh, the book of Hebrews points to but it also points to the dangers that are associated with uh, the fact that we have given our lives to Christ. Don't ever let anyone tell you that you won't have any trials and tribulations or that you won't suffer for the cause of Christ. You will. And actually suffering is biblical and it is a part of our walk uh, with Jesus Christ. Uh, so if we keep those things in mind uh, when these things begin to happen even as James tells us in the first chapter he says count it all joy my brethren but I want to get into the first outline leadership's spiritual ministry this is taken from Hebrews chapter 4 uh, verses 14 through 16 and I will read this from the NIV translation Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weakness, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Verse 16. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. So as we begin reading this, uh, these verses therefore uh, tells us that this is the conclusion of the discussion uh, or the finality of the points to be made and it makes us go back and read what the uh, the argument, if you will, or the discussion was prior to therefore. And as we had said earlier, that the writer of the book of Hebrews is unknown. Uh, the book of Hebrews, uh, the theme of that book is Christ is superior to all. And we have to understand that we have Christ Jesus who was better than Moses, better promises, better than Aaron, the high priest. Uh, they were a type of Christ which was to be fulfilled in the New Testament or in the fullness of times. So God gave us fragments, if you will, or symbols of what our Christ would look like in the person of Aaron and in the person of Moses but they were not the Christ and so all of these individuals God used them to play a pivotal role in in Israel's history to keep them looking forward to keep them looking ahead and we learned uh, in the 11th chapter of Hebrews that these patriarchs they died in faith not receiving the promise but they were looking ahead and that's very important when we are going through trials and tribulations but the challenge of the book of Hebrews uh, to these uh, Christians is to help them understand what they have what they possess as believers and I you know when I was studying this I began to look back over into the book of Ephesians and we're going to go there because uh, there are some things that uh, we need to understand uh, as it relates to this because this is a tactic of the enemy to highlight what we don't have but as a Christian there are some things that we do have and we need to know what those things are but Ephesians chapter 1 I'm just going to read a little bit of this but I hope you will go back we had uh, 
uh, some of the the act, the devotional reading was actually taken from Hebrew from Ephesians chapter four, verses seven through thirteen. But I want to go to Ephesians chapter one, uh, and I want to begin at verse one. Just a little bit of this: Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ now in verse 3 I want you to catch this this is redemption in Christ blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ just as he chose us in him before the foundation of of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love why is this significant in the book of Ephesians uh, the writer Paul uh, mentions the word in it occurs some 90 times in the book of Ephesians uh, they have the Hebrew Christians have uh, they have better than they understand and so do we so this word appearing 90 times in the book of Ephesians it stresses the believers union with Christ in death resurrection ascension and present condition a little bit later on we're going to talk about why these Hebrew Christians were not grasping these truths and we have to make sure that we study so we can understand the position that Christ put us in when he saved us in other words that we can draw from where we are that we are in the body of Christ 90 times in the book of Ephesians the word in appears to help us grasp this but back to our lesson after having proven that Christ was greater than Moses their revered leader and lawgiver this is Hebrews chapter 1 chapter 3 verse 1 and chapter 4 verse 13 the author of the book of Hebrews focused, focused his readers attention on the weakness of the Levitical priesthood proving that Christ was greater than Aaron their first high priest the generation of Jewish Christians to whom he wrote could literally see the temple and the priest who ministered in it Aaron's ministry was performed in a visible and tangible tab tabernacle that only represented the presence of God how easy is it for us to focus on what we can see rather than to walk by faith the author presented the priestly ministry of Christ as being greater than Aaron for three specific reasons um, in these first verses first was his title he was the great high priest this designation was derived from the fact that he was the son of God he has been given an exalted position before the very throne of God. Second, Aaron had to go into the earthly uh, holy of holies to minister on behalf of the people. Christ, as the Son, ministered and ministers before the presence of God. He, having daily access to God's throne was far greater than entering into uh, his presence once a year to make atonement for sin and then third Christ's priestly ministry was greater because of his divine capacity to identify with and sympathize with people's sin this was made possible because of the human nature that Jesus took on so that he could undergo every temptation that humankind faced the benefits to be enjoyed by following the spiritual leadership of our great high our great and compassionate high priest is the privilege of confidently 
approaching him with our needs and receiving the grace and help we need. All we have to do is to come with confidence before the throne of grace and make our requests known. What is confidence? To be confident, to be sure, to be thoroughly persuaded. And this is very important when we have trials and tribulations that we are sure. Uh, David says this in the Psalm 23, Though I walk through the valley in shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. And we have to understand that Jesus will never leave us nor forsake us. It doesn't matter what we're going through. These things have been told to us. They will happen to us. So what we have to do is to be sure in our faith sure in our position we know who we are and we know whose we are and we stand our ground Ephesians chapter 6 tells us after we have done everything to stand and we ought to be found standing uh, on our faith and on the promises uh, of God but this is what the writer of Hebrews is trying to do is to convince these individuals, Christians, of what they have. But the problem with understanding or grasping these truths, I want to share with you, is found. I may not read all of these, but I certainly want to go to Hebrews chapter 3, uh, verse 16 through 19. And we're going to talk about what happened uh, with these Jewish Christians. The Bible says, For who, having heard, rebelled? Indeed, was it not all who came out of Egypt, led by Moses? Verse 17. Now with whom was he angry? Forty years. Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? Verse 18. And to whom did he swear they would not enter his rest but to those who did not obey verse 19 so we see that they could not enter because of unbelief and then I want to look at uh, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 1 and 2 therefore since a promise remains of entering his rest let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them. Catch this. Not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. And this is what happens. And this is why the gospel uh, is a stretch for the Christians at that time and even today to grasp these truths because of unbelief because we didn't mix our faith with what the preacher said we didn't mix our faith with the address and the chapter and the verses that the preacher gave us we decided we didn't want to hear that and we didn't apply any faith to that passage and so we didn't get anything out of the message. So we sometimes blame the preacher that he didn't move us when you could have moved yourself by your faith. So it's very important to understand that faith comes by hearing. Romans chapter 10. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if, if these Jewish Christians... Uh, were not applying the scriptures to their faith then they didn't get anything out of it and they didn't make any progress and God has blessed the writer of Hebrews to remind them we're not going to be able to get over there uh, to all of it but we certainly will be in the fifth chapter the progress they should have made and we will see that a little bit later. Our second outline is entitled Leadership's 
leadership's spiritual requirements. Hebrews chapter 5 verses 1 through 4. Every high priest is selected from among the people and is appointed to represent the people in matters related to God, to offer gifts, sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with those who are ignorant and going astray, since he himself is subject to weakness. This is why he has to offer sacrifices for his own sins as well as for the sins of the people. And no one takes this honor on himself, but he receives it when called by God just as Aaron was. So you can see the frailty in the Levitical system uh, that uh, the priest had to offer uh, sacrifices for himself as well as the people. I want you to look at uh, Leviticus chapter 16 verse 6. Uh, Leviticus chapter 16 verse 7 through 10. Uh, Leviticus chapter 2 verses 14 and 15. And also I want you to look at Exodus chapter 26 uh, verse 34. But I hope we understand that Christ is better than the Levitical system. Because he had to, uh, he gave his life, he died one time. His blood was sufficient for our, our past sins, our present sins, and our future sins. So, uh, when we get over into Hebrews chapter 10, if you were to read that to talk about the sufficiency or the effic efficacy of Christ's blood, then we will see that what he did, and God was well pleased with that, he does not have to duplicate it was sufficient. Uh, Philippians chapter 2 uh, tells us that. But we need to keep these things in mind. So what the writer of Hebrews is encouraging these uh, Jewish Christians to understand that they're in the best possible position that they could be in, even with trials and tribulations. You may be going through quite a bit in your life, as we all are, but you're in the best position you could ever be in in terms of your salvation because you are where God wants you to be in terms of you being saved and you being a joint heir to the kingdom of our God. In other words, encourage yourself in the Lord in what you have. All right, so let's get to this. What were the general qualifications and personal characteristics expected of a high priest under the Mosaic religious system? The writer answered this question by identifying uh, in Hebrews uh, chapter 5 verses 1 through 4, the high priest was selected among men, but first of all was appointed by God to represent them in matters related to God. As a man, the high priest would be familiar with humankind's nature and therefore qualified to know how to present the people's case before God. Second, this high priest had to know what to offer and how to offer the gifts and sacrifices God required to atone for their sins. His main task was at the altar and he had to be qualified to offer sacrifices in the right place and in the right way in order for God to accept them. That's very important. Humankind was estranged from God and the high priest was appointed to offer sacrifices for their sins before God. The third qualification stipulated that the high priest had to be able to minister with compassion, deal gently with all people for both ignorant and willful sins. The motivation for this type of ministry was his own humanity and proclivity to sin, and he was therefore required to offer sacrifices for his own sins. Last, the high priest had to be God appointed and could not appoint himself merely because he aspired to the office. This office was not one to be self-chosen as a profession, but could only be filled by the one who was God appointed. The community of faith the Lord's Church would do well to apply the spiritual principles inherent in these qualifications to leadership today.
Chosen and gifted leaders need to be those who are appointed by God or able to compassionately identify with God's people and to recognize their need to stay right with God through confession and repentance of their own sins. And so I want you to look at 1 Timothy chapter 3 uh, verses 1 through 7 and 2 Timothy chapter 2 uh, verses 1 and 2. And we can qualify all of these things. It's, it's, it's not about uh, uh, credentials uh, per se but it's about a relationship with Jesus Christ uh, that qualifies our leaders uh, to be able to minister and administer uh, the doctrines of Jesus Christ. We need to understand how to do these things and, and what, God's, what God is requiring of us so we'll, we will be able to lead the people where God wants them to be. But... Uh, in the case of these uh, Jewish Christians who were on the brink of throwing in the towel, they had everything that they needed. Keep in mind, these individuals confessed uh, uh, Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, so they had to hear the message. Uh, they had to believe the message. They had to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, so they were confident then but what happened over time when persecution set in, they began to waver in their decision to give their life to Christ. Uh, so we might be able to understand the word backsliding and how that comes into play. Uh, we start having issues in our lives and, 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 and for some reason we think it would be better off if we go back to the lifestyle that we had or to the belief system that we use prior to coming to Christ. And that is a very dangerous thing to do because there's no guarantee that you will make it back. And so uh, the writer of Hebrews goes on to tell them when you study this entire book that they had need of endurance. Uh, they had need of, of, of patience. They had need of, of perseverance. And these qualities are... Uh, 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 or something that uh, we need to have developed by God. And this is one of the purposes of suffering is to qualify us in every area of our lives because when you are going through trials and tribulation, it causes you to wait on God. It causes you to stand your ground. And so uh, uh, if we don't uh, jump ship and overstep, then we'll be able to be qualified in areas that Christ was also qualified. The Bible says he uh, uh, lived in this world. Uh, he was uh, affected by everything that we are going through. Conditions and everything else. Uh, but yet he lived this life without sin. He was able to. And, and don't get me wrong. He was going through. Jesus went through. Uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane, he went through in Hebrews chapter 5. He was crying out to the one that was able to save him. But he stood his ground and God was well pleased with him. And that's the take home message from this lesson for us to follow the examples that Jesus gave us. All of us get down, but you don't have to stay down. Uh, get back up. Get back to your word. Get back to praying. Get back to fasting. Get back to uh, 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 getting in the circle of the saints and, 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 and being proactive in the situation, uh, even if, it, it, if it's a, a state of weakness. Don't just let the devil run over you uh, because uh, he will. And so we need to understand that. But it goes on to say, uh, the question is asked in the quarterly how are leaders selected in your church? By popular vote or by strictly following biblical guidelines as well as observing skills and spiritual disposition? That's a very powerful question, a very loaded question, and we certainly don't have time to get into all of these factors. But, but it's again, it's not just head knowledge, but it's heart knowledge. It's not about just theology but it's a relationship that we need to be looking for the character traits we need to be looking for the signs that tell us if an individual uh, uh, has been with the Lord we ought to be able to see 
evidence the scriptures are clear in telling us that the tree is known by the fruit that it bears and so we need to look for these things and then we will be better served our last outline is entitled leadership's ultimate example and this is uh, taken from Hebrews chapter 5 verses uh, 5 through 10 again from the NIV translation in the same way Christ did not take on himself the glory of becoming a high priest but God said to him you are my son today I have become your father and he says in another place you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek during the days of Jesus life on earth he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death and he was heard because of his reverent uh, submission verse 8 son though he was he learned obedience from what he suffered and once made perfect he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him and verse 10 says and was designated by God to be high priest in the order of Melchizedek I think this is huge uh, that we can understand what Jesus did in his weakness in the days of his life here on earth the Bible says he prayed he offered up prayers and fervent cries and tears it didn't feel good what he was going through but he was calling on the father out of his humanity to the one who was able to save him from death the Bible said he was heard because of his reverent submission and I like this in verse 8 though he was a son Jesus he learned obedience from what he suffered I've been saying for a long time now if if your suffering is not self-inflicted if you are going through some trials and tribulation that God has appointed some things for you to go through that is causing you to suffer the best thing to do is to learn from it if God is prolonging an activity in your life you need to learn from that situation the book of uh, first Peter and second Peter helps us understand about Christian suffering and I hope that you would read both of those books together to help you understand that there are different types of suffering that's what I meant when I said self-inflicted that things that we cause to come up on ourselves and we have to deal with those situations and then there's suffering that the law will allow us to endure uh, to test us and to try us and to shape us and to mold us uh, I've heard over the years people telling God to make them shape them mold them break them and the list goes on and on well God will take you up on that and so but it's very important to understand that we have to learn how to obey we have to learn how to obey in the face of adversity we have to learn how to obey in the face of trial and tribulation and it can be without sufficient knowledge and prayers and all of these kinds of things what did Jesus do in the face of this he prayed he cried out to the Lord and we have to step it up in that shape and in that fashion uh, that we do what he did and that we learn uh, that is better uh, the Bible is clear that obedience is better than sacrifice but selecting people for ordained ministry is quite a delicate task you have to look for two parallel realities a sense of divine calling and some evidence of a character that demonstrates sympathy with people and confidence in the truth of God's word the general qualifications for the high priest outlined by the author of the book of Hebrews captured the spirit of this quote. He illustrated how Christ, our great high priest, met each qualification but was far greater than Aaron's ministry. The author presented specific examples to prove this point. Christ was divinely appointed by God and sent from him to minister an eternal priesthood. Two, Christ suffered and sacrificed himself and died for the sins of the world. 
Aaron's sacrifices covered sins. Christ's sacrifice cleansed sin. You see the difference in that? Third, Christ's sacrifice was of his own accord and was willingly done for man's sins. Fourth, Christ's experiences as the great high priest made him perfect or fully equipped for his divine task. This does not mean that Jesus failed or fell short of God uh, as a man, fell short as God or as a man, but rather he learned in the sense of personally experiencing the pain of being human and the cost of obedience when suffering is involved. And fifth, Christ's appointment as high priest is of God after the order of Melchizedek. Uh, in verse 10, this is introduced in the Old Testament and representing an eternal priesthood unlike the dying order of Aaron. For these specific reasons, Jesus represents the ultimate example of spiritual leadership. This is a very powerful lesson here that this, uh, the writer here of Hebrews the fact that he had to go back to the Old Testament, the old Levitical priesthood, to encourage the Christians, the Jewish Christians at that time, gives you some insight into how far they had fallen. Gives you some insight into how low in their spirit they had become gives you some uh, some insight into the fact that they needed this writing, this epistle, this book at a very desperate time in their life. It gives us some insight that God was concerned about them in such a way that he raised someone, called someone to write a letter to them and encourage them. But I want to, this was not often in the lesson, I just want to give you a little bit of this um, that uh, is in the fifth chapter of Hebrews. And I want to go to uh, verse 12 and then we'll read down to verse 14 and then we'll have our closing prayer. And, and we will be finished. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 12. For though by this time you ought to be teachers. You need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. You have come to need milk and not solid food. Verse 13. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So we said earlier that these Christians had not made any progress. They should have been instructors. They were still on milk. They couldn't eat meat. Mature doctrine for mature Christians. They still needed milk. They still needed somebody to tell them the position that they were in. Instead of grasping the position or the doctrine of truths for themselves and instructing others. To put it mildly, they were bringing up the rear. I challenge you today, don't bring up the rear. Get out in front of the doctrine in terms of being where God wants you to be in your faith and understanding. Don't wallow in any circumstance because you don't have to. God raised us. If you go back over into that Ephesians chapter 1, you will see Christ raised us up. He didn't lower us. He didn't put us down. He brought us up. He didn't shackle us down. He lifted us. 
So we have to remain in the position that he put us in. He lifted us. He raised us. And he gave us every spiritual blessing that he needed to give us that we might be sustained. Don't you feel empowered? Don't you feel stronger now understanding that you are somebody in Christ? That you are somebody that God thought enough of you to to put you in the position that you're in? Don't ever let the devil make you believe that you are something less than the scripture tells you that you are. That would be a lie. I hope, trust, and pray that you have been encouraged by this lesson. I certainly have. And I am reminded to encourage myself when no one else will. I am reminded, as I tell people all the time, that we I know we are praying for other people. But don't forget about yourself. Pray for yourself. Pray about your weaknesses. Pray about your circumstances. Pray about your sufferings. Don't forget about yourself. Because you are going through just as everyone else. We have to be mindful of this thing. And conscious that God said, I will never leave you. And I will never forsake you. Our closing prayer. Dear God, we thank you for choosing and sending your son to be our savior and eternal high priest. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again. God bless you.